So example one, you'll see I've got several polygons shown here. Uh, this is a four-sided quadrilateral, one, two, three, four, five, that's a pentagon, two, four, six, hexagon, two, four, six, seven is a heptagon. Uh, these don't look like the classical shapes that you probably recognize as being those shapes because usually you, you get regular uh, polygons uh, demonstrated in books quite often. But uh, the polygon is a closed shape with straight edges. Uh, these sides themselves cannot overlap, so it's like they could like go like this. You can't call that a polygon. You can't have overlapping sides like that. So you have a, a convex polygon too. Uh, it looks like this, where a concave polygon would be like that. That's a concave pentagon. It has a cave in it. All right. So convex, we're talking about there's no the sides don't like jut in and into the figure like that. So we're looking at just general shapes like this. Uh, the number of sides determines the name of it. So four sides, quadrilateral, five sides, pentagon, and so on and so forth. Um, you should have learned those names back a long time ago. But um, if I do refer to a, pent a polygon at some point and you don't know what that name means, just let me know. Um, but again, the name determines the number of sides. So. <clears throat> We're looking at this, it says to find a pattern from the number of triangles of a convex polygon. So, what I'm looking at here, for example, with this um, quadrilateral, if I take a diagonal, I go from one corner to the opposing corner like so, to split this into triangles. Once I'm looking at all triangles, that's what I'm talking about here. So, uh, I don't want to draw all the diagonals in the picture, I just want to draw enough diagonals so the picture itself gets broken into triangles. If we look at a quadrilateral which has four sides, drawing one diagonal creates two triangles that make up the entire figure. Triangle one, triangle two. Get a little abbreviation there. So four-sided figure, convex figure, draw a diagonal, we make two triangles out of it. If I move on to the second picture here, Again, drawing diagonals from one vertex to opposing vertices. I go from this vertex, doesn't matter which vertex you choose, I'm just choosing that one, over to here, and this vertex over to here. And now you can see triangle, triangle, triangle. The pentagon, the five-sided figure, has been broken up into three triangles. Okay, moving along. If I come to this figure, again, pick one, one of the vertices, doesn't matter which one, I'm going to take this one up here, and go to each opposing vertex. I got that one, that one, and that one. And now you can see triangle, 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 triangle. So we have the number of sides is six, and we get one, two, three, four triangles. And finally, this last one, I'm going to pick this vertex over here, and I go to the opposing vertices that I can hit. This one, this one, this one, and this one. You see triangle, 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 triangle. So if n equals seven sides, we get one, two, three, four, five triangles. So going back to first semester, uh, we did conjectures, right? We looked at a pattern of things. We, we considered what was happening in, in the problems here. There's nothing special about these figures. The number of sides is what they are. I didn't like put a lot of thought into drawing this four-sided quadrilateral here. But so this is just any general quadrilateral. Four sides can be broken up into two triangles, and then any general pentagon, five sides into three triangles, and so on. Do you see a relationship between the number of sides and the number of triangles that we can say we might guess that continues on forever and ever and ever as we continue making more sides? I mean... How would the number of triangles relate to the number of sides? If there's two less. Two less triangles, right? Can we all see that easily, right? So I can determine, just a conjecture here, that the number of triangles is two less and the number of sides. See? 
Okay, so find a pattern for the number of triangles. That is the pattern. All right, so that's the first thing they asked us to do. Now, they asked us now to use that to create a formula to determine the sum of the angles in a convex polygon. So, going back to first semester and remembering things from first semester, how many degrees is in any triangle? 180. 180, right? So this triangle here, I'm going to just draw it in red. This triangle here, the three angles add up to 180. We'll just call this X, Y, and Z. And then the other three angles um, in this blue triangle, we'll just call that A, B, and C. <clears throat> the red angles X, Y, and Z add up to 180, right? And the blue angles A, B, and C add up to 180. If we take a look at the angles in the, in the quadrilateral, <clears throat> Z is an angle, B is an angle, right? A and X added up together make this angle, C and Y added up together make that angle. So the three angles here add up to 180, three angles there add up to 180. All the angles together, which make up the four angles of the, po of the polygon here, add up to 360 then, right? And if we look at this one, I'm not going to do all the A, B, C and stuff on this one, but same argument works for this one. This triangle on the left is 180 degrees. This triangle in the middle has 180 degrees. This triangle off to the right has 180 degrees. 180 plus 180 plus 180 is 540, right? All right, this is just, in general, 3 times 180, right? And this one here, here is 2 times 180 is 360. Okay, if I move on to this one, the one all the way to the left is 180. This one right here is 180. This one right here is 180. And this one up on top is 180. We have a total of 4 which is 720. And then this last one, this is 180, this is 180, this is 180, 180, and 180. And there's a total of five triangles times 180 is 900. If we're trying to create a formula here, we're trying to generalize what we can see happening with actual numbers here. And what you're supposed to see is that the number of triangles in each case simply gets multiplied by the number of degrees in one triangle. So if we're trying to create a formula here for the sum of the angles in a convex polygon, let's just call it S for sum. It's the number of triangles times 180. And the number of triangles is two less than the number of sides. The number of sides I'm calling n. So the number of triangles is two less than the number of sides. So if n is the number of sides, n minus 2 is the number of triangles. And the number of triangles times 180 for every triangle equals the sum of all the angles. If we test our formula out, if n is 4, 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 times 180 is 360. If n is 5, 5 minus 2 is 3, 3 times 180 is 540. n equals 6, 6 minus 2 is 4, 4 times 180 is 720. n equals 7, 7 minus 2 is 5, 5 times 180 is 900. So there's your formula. S is the sum of the, ang of the angles and n is the number of sides. When you do develop a formula, it's helpful to identify for the person using your formula what n, what the variable represents. All right, so that is a formula that you'll be using quite often. So it's, I think developing the formula helps us to understand it and memorize it more quickly. But um, that's in general, anytime you need to know the number of degrees in any polygon, convex polygon, take the number of sides minus 2, multiply that times 180, you get the sum of all the interior angles.